Um, thank you very much. Um, in fact, I'm going to share uh, this uh, portion of the program with Jack McLaren. Um, we were down at ARAC um, last Thursday, thank you. <laughs> the days are all blurring together. And uh, I believe that Jack gives the best explanation of what the issue is with severances. Um, and in fact, Jack was the one that stepped forward to help uh, my neighbor, Dale Murphy, uh, when he was having problems uh, with his severance. So I'm going to ask Jack uh, to explain what the problem is, and uh, then I'll take a few minutes just to explain where we're going from here. Thanks, Jack. Thank you, Shirley. It's always a pleasure to be at a meeting of landowners. It's uh, always, for me, like coming home to a friendly audience. But we do have a big problem with the D55 water guideline that's been written by the Ministry of the Environment. That is a guideline, it's just information on what a good water well in rural Ontario should give you with respect to quantity of water, safety, which is E. coli and, ba e. coli and bacteria, and then the aesthetic parameters, which would be taste, color, and smell, which have nothing to do with health. Things like hard water, sulfur, salt, etc., iron. So what's happened, um, the official plan of Ottawa allows for one single lot severance off the rural property, which is often a farmer, but not necessarily, but a landowner. Uh, if you're along the road, you meet a few very basic requirements, not prime farmland, and we've all been happy with that. Until about three or four years ago, a city planning staff member took it upon himself, or probably a number of the city planners who are very socialistic, he took it upon himself to take this MOE D55 water guideline which is just a guideline, just information, and take it and make it a condition of severance for these single lot severances in Ottawa. So now it becomes not a guideline, but a requirement, a must do thing. So they said to, uh, and it affected two people here in West Carleton, Dale Murphy at Fitzroy Harbor, and Barry Craig at Kinburn, and a third man, Leo, Leo Ricci in Osgood about three years ago. Dale and Barry was about two years ago. So they, to meet this requirement, in, in both Barry, Craig's, Barry Craig and Joan Craig's case, they wanted to sever a lot to retire on. They're in their late 70s, they're farmers, they wanted to give the farm to their son. They had a single lot already, and they asked, but they cleared trees and made that into a field, and not wanting to uh, build in a farm field and save farmland, as a good farmer would, who always respects farmland, they said, let us put it over here in a rocky, stony corner of the farm where there's some bush and can we move the lot? And the city said, yes, you can. So they gave up the lot they had and paid for a second severance on this new location because they were told they could do that if they gave up the first lot. Now they drilled a well because they knew they wanted to build a house and they going to live there. They knew where the well would go. And they got a water sample from the well and they hired a geological engineer, Peter Stanton, to do a hydrogeological report to say that the water sample met the guideline requirements, which is now not a guideline anymore, but a requirement of, of severance. And they had lots of water and it was safe to drink, but it was high in fluorides, one of the aesthetic elements. <clears throat> the engineering report said that the water could be treated with a device easily obtainable from any one of a number of water treatment companies, and that would bring the level down to, the, the level was too high and it would bring it down to an acceptable, desirable level as per their guideline requirement. And the city said, well, that's very nice, but we don't care. The water coming out of the ground before it's treated doesn't meet the guidelines, so lot refused. So Barry Craig paid $20,000 to give up the lot he already had. So he lost two things, his $20,000, and he didn't get his new severance, and the old severance is gone. Dale Murphy had basically the same experience. He wanted his son wanted to live on the farm with his young wife and baby, and they wanted to sever a lot, and went through the same process, applied for the lot. In both cases, the lots were approved by the Committee of Adjustment, and it was and city staff who say no, not the Committee of Adjustment, not politicians. City staff say no. So the city staff, staff, planning staff have control. So again, in Dale Murphy's case, it was the same thing. They knew they were going to build a house, they drilled the well, got a water sample. That uh, was hard water, sulfates, which could be, Peter Stanton's engineering report said that could be treated, made good. And the city said, well, no, we don't care. It, the raw water coming out of the well doesn't meet the guidelines. Severance refused, another eighteen dollars to $20,000 gone. 
And Dale Murphy's son, Chris, had to go and buy a lot somewhere else to build, else to build a house for his wife and his baby, and that's what they have done. They're disappointed in both families. Leo Ricci actually took the city to the OMB because he was turned down for the same reason. He won his lot severance in Osgood, but what a cost. Thirty to fifty thousand dollars of lawyers cost to get a lot. This is terrible. It's terrible because it's the taking away of our private property rights by bureaucrats, planners. Planners tend to come out of a university with a very socialistic attitude towards property rights. They have an attitude that they don't want any more building or construction in rural. They, um, so they want to stop rural severances. They've outlawed country and state lot subdivisions in rural Ottawa in the new draft of the official plan, so they're gone. All we had left was, left was one single lot severance. And effectively, it's gone now because who is going to spend $20,000 uh, to, to go through that process to apply for a severance, and most wells, I bet you 80% of them, have some aesthetic parameter that is too high. So you're most likely going to lose your money and not get your severance, so most people, nobody's going to spend that money and take that risk. So effectively, they've outlawed single lot severances and got the job done that they want done. In Barry Craig's case, he phoned up our counselor, Eli O'Shaughnessy, which brings us to why we're involved in the we're heavily involved in the, in the missile election right now. I am campaigning for two candidates in two ridings because the councillors, um, Eli Shunt, well, let me back up. For Be uh, Barry Craig phoned Eli L. Shantiri, and he was a strong supporter of him and said, would you help us? My laptop refused, Eli wouldn't return his phone call. Dale Murphy called him and said, would you help me? My lot's been refused, and he said, call your MPP, Jack, that's me, because it's an MOE water guideline, it's a provincial problem, which is the farthest thing from the truth. It's not a provincial problem. But I said to Dale, it's a city problem, but I'll, you are my constituent as well, so I will try to help you. Because as you know, I feel very strongly about property rights, as, as all of you do. So I said, we'll have to go and lobby all of you. And I actually thought we could convince these councillors at ARAC, there's five of them, uh, Agriculture and Rural Affairs Committee, and they make decisions over lot severances in rural affairs. And I, I actually thought if we came forth with a good, sound, logical, sensible, common sense argument, that we could change their minds and common sense would prevail. It turns out I was wrong. Um, I said, we went to each of the five councillors and, and presented to them, and I said to Dale Murphy, uh, you or your son Chris should come with me, because it's your land, and I will help you. And we went and we spoke to the five councillors, no, four, because there was no point in me speaking to Eli. He and I have never agreed in politically on anything, anywhere, anytime. Uh, but all the other four I did speak to, two of them said to me a year and a half ago they would support changing uh, or, or uh, presenting to the committee and saying that it was reasonable to give these severances to these two men. But then when we actually got to ARAC, we were never allowed to be on the agenda. Just when we were about to get on the agenda and make a presentation and ask them to vote and make a decision in our favor, hopefully, it all of a sudden the rug got pulled out from under us and we weren't even allowed on the agenda. Well, at that point in time, that was all I could do. So I called Shirley Dole and the Carlton landowners and Shirley got heavily involved, I think, uh, how long ago was that, about eight months ago? Last year, Shirley? Um, I think that was uh, about that. Yeah, last fall, maybe? Yeah. And, and she, you've done a great job, and, and you've gone to ARAC and made presentations, and many of you have gone to meetings, like that great meeting in uh, Osgood, which I couldn't make. Actually, that one, it got to a point where they said I was persona non grata, so it would be better if I stayed away for a while. So, I, so Shirley took over and carried the ball with the Carlton Landowner Association, did a marvelous job, uh, and you had that great meeting of about 160 very angry people in Osgood, plus other meetings in West Carlton. And we were in Cumberland two weeks ago or last week and gave them another blast of shit. Excuse the language, but that's what they deserve. And of course, by this point in time, we realized they're turning their backs on us and they have no intention of saying yes, and they're being lead, led by Eli S. Frontieri. I will tell you that. And it's become a political thing. It has nothing to do with Dale Murphy. Barry Craig, it's strictly political. They're having a political turf war, these guys, which is appalling. The, uh, the primary objective of any politician or his job is to help the people he represents, and they have forgotten that. And it's all about political survival. And that's the worst thing they can do, is to betray the people that voted for them and put them there, or even if you didn't vote for them, they 
that represent you, and they should be working for you and standing up and fighting for your property rights, especially in a rural environment, and they are the only voice we have at City Hall, and it's no voice at all. So, we're involved in politics. Uh, as the Landowners Association, as my office is MPP, many MPPs will not stray into the municipal arena because they figure that's not where we should be. I don't feel that way. I think the job is to help people. So we need to get rid of a few of these councillors, and there's an awful lot of great new people here, and I, I congratulate all of you as candidates for entering the race. <laughs> Democracy does work. Um, it, it's hard work, and they need support. These people are standing up and being brave about that, and they need support from, the, from us. And if we can get some of these good people elected, and I suspect every one of them is a good person, and we will have, what we need is a voice, a strong voice, representing us at City Hall. Um, and we can do that on, on October 27th. So get involved, campaign, knock on doors, talk to your neighbors, let's get out and vote for these people, replace these councillors that aren't serving us, like Eli L. Shantiri, Scott Moffat, Stephen Blaze, and, and Doug Thompson did the right thing, he quit. <laughs> So we have a unique opportunity, and I invite you, and I ask you, get involved. We, we've, we're used to working hard for our rights. We're used to, we're used to working uh, against tough odds and uphill battles. And I'll tell you, we're working very hard here in West Carleton with Jonathan Mark and uh, Dan Scarf is a fellow that we think is a pretty good character. Stand up, Dan. Here, Dan Scarf. And Jonathan isn't here. He has three young children. Oh, he is here. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> All right. I was going to say you were looking after job number one, which is your family, and if that was the case, good for you. But I'm sure I'm sure they are looked after. Oh, have you? Okay. Oh, they're right here. So we've been out knocking on doors, especially with Jonathan here, and uh, we have a great team, and uh, Shirley Dolan's on the team, and. Uh, well, well, quite a bunch of you here. Jan Campbell, Tracy Jardine's campaign manager. A lot of new people at politics doing a great job. And we're knocking on doors, putting up signs. You know what? We're getting yeses at the door because people are hungry for change. They just need a choice.